Okay, so uh, yeah, let's of course start with the isolation tapes. Uh, uh, came out a week ago, actually. So uh, for you, like it just came out. So what's the thing about this album for you? Thing about this album for me, um, what I what I like about it is that we were kind of thrown into an environment and a, a, a time where we didn't have a deadline and no expectations toward uh, what what we wanted to do. So we just started experimenting. Uh, and it turned out something completely different to, to everything else we've ever done before. And it was a fun experiment for me. Yeah, to what extent actually did this pandemic uh, affect this album, you know, writing the music, uh, recording? I think when we started to realize that it was going to be a proper lockdown and a, a long period of uh, where we weren't supposed to see other people. Um, I don't know, it, it worked, the days were quiet. Uh, there was, the streets were empty and uh, it was a bit scary. Completely, everything was upside down and uh, um, we definitely felt uh, we cannot just do what we what we would do normally. We wanted to try to reflect on this situation and 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 look for sounds and uh, uh, and arrangements that somehow sound like a lockdown in the beginning. It, it, I don't know. That's just what what com comes to my mind right now yeah did it affect to the uh, recording process somehow yeah uh in the very beginning uh we were completely isolated of each other this means uh we didn't we didn't meet in the studio um i have i just had my iphone and my piano at home so that's uh I, I played a lot of piano and I, um, I, I sent around a bunch of uh, ideas that I had and uh, I got stuff from Lupus that he did at home. He has like a small setup where he can, uh, you know, program stuff and, and play guitar and record vocals. Um, so the first week or so we just exchanged stuff that we did at home. Uh, and then I think the week I started going to the studio by myself just to record drums, to add to the ideas that were there. And then when we kind of, after a few weeks, uh, knew how, the, how it's working and, and that we can actually meet two, uh, two people was okay to meet, three was not okay. Uh, we started going to the studio, the two of us sometimes, and uh, started putting stuff together. Um, so it is kind of a patchwork recording style. Um, in the end, we threw everything together and, uh, and, and put the chaos in order, but it started with uh, home recordings, uh, and uh, which some of them even stayed in the, in the final mix. Okay, uh, a lot of bands are, of course, writing music at the moment because they can't go anywhere. But for you, uh, what was like uh, the starting point to start making uh, isolation tapes? Uh, I think in our heads, uh, the day we needed to go home from touring, we, uh, we had the idea that we were somehow use the time um to record to record an album yeah um and as there were months and months ahead uh, well we took time uh and and tried different things until we really knew 
how the record was going to be, but uh, I think we knew from the beginning that that's the only thing that we can do. Yeah, well, the experience is not over yet, uh, so uh, it kind of fits the team, I guess, but like, what kind of experience is it now to actually publish music under the lockdown and this situation? Uh, it's super interesting for us because uh, we started a label in the meantime. That's a thing that we wanted to do for a long time, but never managed to, you know, think it through enough because we were touring so much. So uh, again, this, this pandemic uh, gave us time for that. Um, and uh, it was a very rewarding experience because um, you you get to see um, clearer and and more direct how the whole process with uh, promoting a record and and uh, you know selling and pre-ordering stuff. We we knew it from from other records, but the reward was bigger because we knew we uh, kind of did it all ourselves. Um, and uh, I think in general uh, the online business is going very well and uh, we sold the record exclusively through our online shop and, uh, and that was interesting too. Normally we would have distribution network and uh, you could buy the record in the record stores which wasn't possible at the time and which probably won't be possible starting next week again. So the setup is perfect for that. Um, and it, yeah, it was again a, a, a nice experiment that we that we wanted to do for a long time. Yeah, just a quick word on your record label. So what are the like driving ideas behind behind your own label? I mean, generally uh, managing our rights ourselves um and having more from the how do you say uh uh like s kind of selling more direct to 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 everyone who wants to buy our music um and sharing less with uh, with a label and record company you know you share less of the money but you also have more uh, responsibility for that and we um uh, we think it's good so far, um, but the idea, like a further idea of the label is also uh, when our setup is, is a little bit stronger and we maybe have a person working for us in the future, that we can um, use our network to, to release the artists, uh, give them, uh, you know, give them a good outlet. Yeah. If it all works well, but that's, um, you know, plans for the future. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, now that you are uh, like dipping more deeper into the music industry, and this is actually a very in interesting to say the least time for music industry, because it might be changing in a ways that nobody knows yet. And I've been asking this question for, for from a many different bands, but in from your point of view, how will this uh, pandemic and all this uh, change music industry actually? I'm not so sure. I mean, um, right now you see a lot of things that are happening because of the lack of concerts, you know, Twitch uh, and, you know, live streaming in general. Um, everyone tries to, to make money otherwise and, and, you know, try the different formats and you try to evaluate if it's better to, you know, take money to let let people watch a link or if a GoFundMe link is better and give it for free and give everyone the choice to give something if he or she wants. Um, but all these things that everything happens online now, I think it's good and interesting, but I think it will never... Um, substitute live shows and there will be a time where live shows are possible again what i think is 
as we set up all these new formats and find uh, ways that are enjoyable for, for, for people, it will probably stay to some extent, but it will only, you know, be a promotion tool. You know, you have to happen online. You have to make everyone aware uh, on the internet that you that you're there in order that they attend your shows. I think that's, I think, and I hope that it's going to stay like that, that the live business and also the experience, you know, to play your music in front of an audience and exchange energy in a direct way, that this will not be affected in any way by, uh, by everything that happens right now. Yeah, times are pretty uncertain, but uh, is there some like concrete uh, plans for Kadava already now that the album is out? And... Yeah, uh, we have scheduled the next release already, which I don't want to talk about yet. Um, but the next Robotour release is uh, planned and, and facilitated already in a way. Um, we have actually a couple plans that are still secret for, for our label to release stuff in the next year. Um, we are again in the studio and start writing new material, um, but we are not in a rush at all to release something, I would say. I think with the current release, we um, even made more way in like more space in the next year to, to keep writing. Um, and uh, we are every week uh, in contact with our booking agent. Um, and we want to, you know, we try to find ways how to play shows next year with hygiene concepts or, you know, no one, no one believes that there will be a festival season like it usually is in summer, but there might be alternative concepts and we are looking everywhere uh, to, to you know, find suitable things to do in summer. Um, yeah, and in the meantime, as I said, we will keep working in the studio and um, have some things ready for release. Uh, and we will we will adopt to the situation and act accordingly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. For uh, lastly, uh, let's go to a bit of uh, like local news. This is not, of course, the like ideal time to talk about music scenes. But uh, I, uh, yeah, I actually live in Berlin too. But. Uh, <laughs> so I've been talking with a lot of bands here about the music scene, but uh, basically you guys seem to be like the biggest band from Berlin at the moment, in my eyes, maybe. So how do you see the Berlin uh, metal scene? I Honestly, I have to say right now I, f I feel very disconnected, um, not only because of the lockdown, but... Um, I I became a father for the second time at the end of August and my first daughter is three years old and um, I think I'm getting ready for a phase in my life where I where I am settled with my family role and go out more again but there has been a time where I where I stayed home a lot because I wanted to take uh, my responsibility serious, especially because I was away from home a lot. So it, it has been a while that I, uh, that I went to shows regularly and I'm about to change that again. <laughs> uh, but you know, everything that I know from, uh, from us starting as a band uh, was, the, I loved the scene in Berlin. Uh, the shows were, um, you know, there were, there's always a lot of people that you know. And uh, also from playing shows, I think Berlin um, made, uh, made itself a very interesting city for rock and metal music. This is not how I knew it in the beginning, maybe just because I didn't know the people, but I, uh, 
I started to enjoy it a lot and going to shows a lot. And you know, that there's all kinds of venues and all sizes of venues where you can see, uh, you know, your friends play or everyone from the world comes to Berlin. Um, yeah, there's always something going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a, a lot of bands here, of course, but uh, it seems that not, not that uh, many bands from here actually like break or make it. So is it somehow harder? for bands to stand out in here or how do you see it? That's a good question. I, I wouldn't know really. Um, I mean, there are a lot of bands, but uh, there are not many really famous bands. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I would probably say that um, in every scene, not everyone wants to be the biggest band in the world and a lot of a lot of bands are maybe just happy with uh, uh, having a steady job and do whatever they can on the side which is as um, respectable i would say but uh, i don't know if it's that I'm just uh, trying to trying to spin ideas here I'm not sure Yes. Or if the partying is more important, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be it. That might be it. I mean, to some, it certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's how we started as well. We we made ourselves, you know, known um, rather through partying in the beginning than through playing shows. <laughs> <laughs> so, in what what states did that change? What? Yeah, how did you become more serious then? Um, I think uh, in 2010, we, uh, I think we just partied and went out a lot and, you know, on the side, we would, we would go to the rehearsal room at night and, 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 you know, drink there and have a good time. And, uh, and we weren't in a rush at all. So we went to bars a lot, especially to the eight millimeter bar in Mitte, that was our meeting point. And uh, we, uh, we met a lot of people there. We told everyone who we were and, you know, we had a certain look and we, we went out together a lot. Uh, and I think that helped make connection with a lot of people. And it took uh, almost one year until our record came out. But by the time I think Facebook became so strong that you know you could uh, uh, you could be recognized. It was really new to us at the time. Internet became such a cool tool, um, and then it went just like that to you know make connection to a record label and release the record, and then uh, that all went way too fast for us until we were um, booked for our first long tour through Eastern Europe, we were just getting completely wasted every night and, you know, just make the most fun out of it. Um, and I think that that tour almost went for a month and I think no one was sober ever <laughs> at no time of the day. Um, and I think after that, with the experience, how uh, you know how great it was to be able to do that we started gradually becoming more serious about it because you you know you you're getting a little older every year and you have to um you don't have to do the same thing all over and over and you know it takes power consuming also but um yeah, we kind of, we got thrown into that business and, and had to adopt to the situation. And becoming more serious was probably the, the biggest task. 